how they are acting. As I stated, I have faith, specifically what they must do. God sustains my faith. My faith is in man, not God. And what they did to my faith, God didn't tell me what happened from the beginning. He also stopped pulling layers one after another. He stopped pulling layers, man. The plot is now clear. The plot was clear to everyone. After hearing the story, you all saw how Shankuller was made. Now that it has been months since Shankuller Robinson's accident, her family has literally been fighting for the truth ever since the news of the tragic event broke. However, it almost seemed as though their efforts were in vain. Finally, it has come to light that a cover-up in law enforcement may have prevented the truth from being revealed. However, the situation is made even worse by the fact that the wrongdoing is so extensive that reports suggest that hospitals and even the Mexican government as a whole may be involved. This implies that the wrongdoing may extend beyond just the authorities. I'm telling you to stick around until the end of the video if you don't want to miss any of these details about what appears to be corruption. I realize that suggesting that the government might be involved might seem a little unrealistic to some people. However, I am not the one who suggests that the Mexican government may be the issue. A former top FBI agent had said these words. Even though this story is heartbreaking, the majority of people are probably surprised that the case has not yet been resolved. Well, precisely this is what has prompted the victim's father to post about some of the less-than-ideal events in the case on social media. According to the original report, on October 29, Robinson's body was discovered by authorities in the living room of her San Jose del Cabo vacation rental. However, distinct timelines for the events of that day are provided in the initial local police reports. Around 2 o'clock p.m., a guest allegedly informed the resort's medical staff that Robinson had consumed a lot of alcohol. News obtained a report from the local police that day. Robinson should have been taken to the hospital because she was dehydrated, but none of her friends did. According to the police report, she passed away later from cardiac arrest. However, according to the official autopsy report, she was seen by medical personnel before 3 p.m., and shortly thereafter, she was pronounced dead due to an injury to her neck and spinal cord. Her death has been attributed by Mexican prosecutors to a deliberate attack, not an accident. After the video of what Robinson's family believes to be Robinson surfaced, Robinson's family demanded that authorities investigate the case more thoroughly and maintained that the death of the 25-year-old was not caused by alcohol poisoning. Although the date of the recording is unclear, Robinson can be heard being beaten while a male voice in the background asks, can you at least fight back? The outcry of Robinson's family attracted national attention, and the FBI soon after made the announcement that they had begun an investigation into the case. The FBI Charlotte Field Office began an investigation nearly a month after Robinson's death, as Mexican prosecutors attempt to extradite the suspect. The length of time that the investigation has been taking is now causing concern, to the point where even a former FBI agent has spoken out about it. Chris Wecker, a retired FBI agent, previously stated to media outlets that a statute permits the FBI and the State Department to investigate the murder of a U.S. citizen by another U.S. citizen in a foreign country, subject to certain restrictions. But he also said that the fact that the investigation is taking so long is a sign that the Mexican government has some strings. If this had occurred in the United States, in his words, First and foremost, because it would be a local homicide, the FBI would not be investigating it. But when you have a video like this and witnesses who are available to be questioned or interviewed, as well as other forensic evidence, such as a video or time logs, a typical homicide investigation would move along fairly quickly. All of the evidence in the Idaho case, including cell phone pinging, is available. He then added extraterritorial cases, particularly those involving the Mexican government, which are extremely unpredictable when dealing with the prosecutors, federal police, and judicial police in that country. 
First and foremost, their competence is variable. Number two, as well as their drive to actually move forward with the case. Therefore, we must acquire the evidence before we can actually present it to U.S. courts. All of that is accomplished by treaty, accompanied by formal papers, request, and ribbons and bows. Continue going back and forth. It is a time-consuming, laborious, and bureaucratic procedure. It is even worse in Mexico. Have this to say regarding the case's evidence. The video is here for you. You can access stored email and text data. People are typically careless at the time, and then they text back and forth about what happened or attempt to piece their story together after the fact. Therefore, I'm pretty confident that the FBI is carefully examining the electronic evidence. People are being interviewed. I refer to it as interviewing because it is not an interrogation if you are not under arrest. It's a conversation. You are not entitled to advice. You are free to get up and leave at any time. If they have been represented, I'm sure they have already interviewed everyone there. Therefore, they have gathered as much evidence as they possibly can. I think that can currently be gathered in the United States, as the FBI investigation nears its two-month mark. Flegger concludes that maintaining pressure on the Mexican government is crucial. According to the man, the government starts to move when you apply pressure and pressure it, almost embarrassing it. A suspect in Shankella Robinson's death has been charged by Mexican prosecutors, according to reports. Robinson died on October 29, while on vacation in Cabo San Lucas, Mexico, with six of her friends. The American woman that Mexican authorities want to extradite has not been named in public, but they have confirmed that she is one of her friends. The ongoing investigation also involves the FBI. I'm so happy. That makes me feel good. We have been waiting for that, for someone to be held accountable and taken into custody. When she learned that an arrest warrant had been issued, Robinson's mother, Salamander Robinson, informed ABC News. Just waiting for justice to be done is all I can do. Given that the Mexican government claims to have a suspect in custody, I know it may be difficult to understand the picture Swecker painted of them. However, what Swecker was saying actually goes much deeper than what is reported in the media. To put it another way, the doctor actually told Robinson's friends to take her to the hospital if they wanted to save her life while she was still unconscious at the villa her friends were staying in. Moreover, despite what the media claims, they completely rejected the choice. The friends themselves admitted that they were provided with a $5,000 bill to transport her to the hospital, which they did not possess. Although I acknowledge that it might as well be a fabrication, the fact of the matter is that American tourists traveling in Mexico have been the victims of extortion for some time. So much so that it is now known to the American government. U.S., according to reports, after years of complaints that the facility preyed on Americans by overcharging, 